they decided to kill the Nexus. Every Android lover's beloved Nexus, and uh, that was the birth of the Pixel. What was the rationale behind uh, this move by Google? Oh, uh, we didn't kill Nexus necessarily, right? Like we just taken the best of Nexus and modified it for the Pixel. And you think it can be fitted against uh, the dual lens? Uh, on the iPhone 7 Plus that we're seeing now? I would definitely suggest that you do a camera do, test. Do a camera test. Okay. But we are very confident. Hello and welcome to this special edition of Tech Toys. My name is Megha Vishwanath and I'm checking in from Google headquarters in Mountain View, California. This new smartphone is already touted to be one of the best Android smartphones of the year and is ready to take on its competitor, the iPhone 7 and the iPhone 7 Plus, head on. We're talking about Google's two new flagships, the Pixel and the Pixel XL, and I decided to put these handsets to test, and I agree, the location is a cliche. From unlimited cloud storage to the first device to pack in a Google Assistant that uses machine learning, the Pixel is the first ever smartphone that's been made by Google. The Pixel comes in two variants, a regular 5-inch and an XL 5.5-inch version. Both pack in similar features, metal and glass hardware with a fingerprint sensor on the back, a 12.3 megapixel rear camera, a Snapdragon 821 processor, 4 GB of RAM, a vibrant AMOLED screen with punchy colors, and unlike the latest trend, the Pixel has retained the 3.5mm headphone jack. But the difference between the two variants lies in the battery size, screen resolution and of course the price. In India, you can get your hands on the base model for 57,000 rupees. If you're still on the fence, stay on with me because I caught up with a senior product manager at Google, Krishna Kumar, for an in-depth demo of this new Android beast. Pixel device and you have the Pixel XL, XL there. Okay. We have quite black and uh, very silver colors. The two devices are made with anodized aluminium mm -hmm. and gorgeous 2.5D glass. And we call this lovingly as the shade. And the shade provides a very unique design element that completely stands out among the sea of devices that you have. Yeah. Because of the mix in mix of aluminium and glass, and you've done the a mix half of and half. Aluminium and yeah. glass. Uh, it's a beautiful design element which is very unique to the Pixel. It helps with antennas, but it's a very interesting design element. One of the interesting things that you might notice is that we have a very powerful camera, but we really wanted to ensure that there's no camera bump so that you do not have rocking when you leave it on the table. Yeah. So we have a very thin wedge design, mm -hmm. which is slightly thinner at the bottom and slightly bigger at the, at the top, but at the same time, it's extremely easy to hold in the hand because you get the thin reed from the bottom. Mm. But at the same time, because of this wedge design, you do not have any rocking when you place it flat yeah. on the table. Both of these devices um, are, as you can see it, they are almost identical from an industrial design perspective. And in terms of the internal components too, they're almost identical. Mm -hmm. The only difference being that one is a 5.5 inch, the Pixel is a 5 inch device. Okay. The Pixel 5.5 inch is a Quad HD screen and this is a Full HD AMOLED screen. Both of these devices have a fingerprint sensor on the back. Right at the back, right. And that is in such an ergonomic position to hold a fingerprint sensor. When you pull it out of the pocket, you just touch the fingerprint sensor, immediately both unlocking and baking the device. 12.3 mm -hmm. megapixel, 1.55 micron large pixel camera and that works great in all light conditions. In fact, DxO Mark gave it a score of 89. 89, yes, which is I saw the that. highest rated smartphone camera in the world. Yeah. So we are, we are very proud of that and we optimized everything from startup to taking a picture to the speed of taking a picture to the speed quality to, to get a great camera experience. Okay, and you think it can be fitted against uh, the dual lens uh, on the iPhone 7 Plus that we're seeing now? I would definitely suggest that you do a camera do, test. Do a camera test. Okay. But we are very confident. Okay. All right. Let's just get a little bit into the camera. Yeah. You can get into the ca you can start the camera by just double pressing the power button. Right. You saw how fast that comes up. Yeah. Um, the picture quality is great across any light conditions. Yeah. And we have HDR Plus which gives it a beautiful shade across many different light conditions. Mm -hmm. This is an especially difficult light condition as you because see Because it's low here and yeah, yeah. Because there's sunlight here and there's multiple colors, but you'll see that the picture quality overall is fantastic. Mm -hmm. One of the most interesting features that we are really proud to offer is unlimited storage of pictures and videos at full resolution. Mm -hmm. So that's the camera. We are really, very proud of the camera. Definitely try it out. I will. <laughs> yes. I will. Um, now let's get into the Google Assistant. Yeah. 
Google Assistant is, is, is the glue that binds our whole hardware ecosystem together. Mm -hmm. It brings in all the knowledge and the machine learning and the intelligence of Google's ecosystem right onto the device. It's a conversational and a contextual assistant, which basically is right at your fingertips. Hi, Amy. How can I help? You just ask it what you need. OK, Google, what do I have to do today? And your assistant understands and helps you out. You can even carry on a conversation with it. How long will it take to get to downtown Chicago from home? Here you go. What restaurants are there? Book a table at Cortino Restaurant. Sure. As you can see from here, what the Google Assistant yep. does, it understands the context of your conversation. And you don't, yeah. And you don't have to, it's not a, it's not a transactional query. How much of this depends on the, on the data speed or the network? We struggle with data speeds and LTE is, uh, LTE in pockets, right. and it doesn't really respond. So that's why I wanted to know that how effective would Google Assistant be in places where data speeds are not very high or the bandwidth is not very high? We spent a lot of time optimizing the amount of data usage and that's not just for the Google Assistant, it goes across all of our apps. So that's the device. Um, and the 3.5 mm headphone jack remains. And the 3.5 <laughs> That remains, yes. And you get fantastic sound quality. So basically for Google, the Pixel currently is the jewel in the crown. And you would feel that as well, not just because of its performance, but also because of its price. Unlike its previous series, the Nexus line, the Pixel is not a budget or a mid-range smartphone. It is premium in every which way. But what made Google raise the bar? Why did they decide to kill the Pixel? What made them enter into the hardware space now? And should Apple be worried about Google's new smartphone? In an attempt to find answers to all these questions, I caught up with a Googler who would help us decode the company's latest move. And now it's time to say hello to Nanda Ramachandran, Global Director, Android and Chrome Partnerships. Having formerly worked with Samsung as Vice President and General Manager, Nanda led strategy, marketing and product management for Galaxy tablets, the Galaxy Gear smartwatch and Samsung Home Sync. So it's no wonder that Google decided to rope in Nanda to its core strategy team for Android. We caught up with him for an exclusive chat at the Google headquarters. Listen in. Nanda, thank you so much for being with us on CNBC TV 18 Young Turks. It's a pleasure talking to you. Let me first start by asking you, you decided to kill the Nexus, every Android lover's beloved Nexus, and uh, that was the birth of the Pixel. What was the rationale behind uh, this move by Google? Oh, uh, we didn't kill Nexus necessarily, right? Like, we just taken the best of Nexus and modified it for the Pixel. So, the right way to think about is uh, Nexus is best of Android experience. Pixel is much more about best of Google experience. So, Pixel, we wanted all the Google services to be front and center. So, in order for us to do it, we wanted the hardware and software integration to be tightly done and powered by artificial intelligence and machine intelligence. So, that's the first step we are taking. Uh, so not necessarily killing Nexus, it's just building over Nexus platform. So do you think you would continue wooing users uh, with the Pixel, even the budget conscious ones, or have you left them behind uh, in, in the Nexus between the past and the it's, Pixel? It's a, it's a good question. So first of all, like Nexus, we're not walking away from the Nexus. So anybody who had bought the Nexus, the software upgrades, the promise of Nexus will continue through. Mm -hmm. Uh, so Nexus was a value prop for developers, not necessarily for the best bang for the buck. But when you look at it, uh, yes, we did launch a phone which had the best of specs for the best possible price at that point. But when you look at the ecosystem, the ecosystem has taken over, right? You got the Micro Max phones, the Huawei phones, which are providing the best bang for the buck. And they're already providing that value. Pixel was fairly a unique approach towards the premium segment where we thought we need to provide the value to provide the Google services front and center. It almost seems like you've passed the buck, uh, you know, to, to the Chinese companies and said, hey, you guys look at the budget devices and uh, Google is now only going to look at the premium segment. It's not like passing the buck. Android is all about open. Yeah. It's never one size fits all. So we are extremely happy with the challenges and it overcome that they're overcoming the Android OEMs, including the Chinese vendors. So we feel very comfortable with the path that they are taking for the middle and the lower end uh, of the category. We just wanted to focus on the premium end of the spectrum. Okay, so now that Google has decided to get into the hardware space, that's pitting the, the Pixel against the iPhone 7 and the iPhone 7 Plus. I mean, is that some kind of a statement that you're making towards Apple? I mean, we did see a lot of puns at the launch we, event. It's much more intended against people who are using Google. 
on a daily basis. Uh, if you look at the ecosystem, whether it's like Android ecosystem or cross Android ecosystem, the best of Google is front and center for everyone and there are so many billions of users that are using Google services. Mm -hmm. um, so we honestly believe Pixel uh, provides those unique experiences. For example, things like Google Assistant, we have the ability to optimize it on a specific hardware and that particular unique hardware and software integration is what we care about in the Pixel. Um, so if iPhone customers can switch over to take the Pixel, we would love for that to happen. But at the end of the day, we wanted to just provide our own viewpoint on what this premium Android or premium smartphone experience needs to be. So would we see Google at some point in the future make a budget version of the Pixel just to cater to their Nexus audience? Um, so Nexus as a program, like, like we said, we have transitioned off. So it's a pivot that we have already established. So Pixel is the new direction that we are going. Existing Nexel, Nexus users will never be ignored by Google. Uh, they are always going to be supported with the promise that Google has made. Um, so going forward in the future, Pixel is the transition. So you were a part of the initial uh, founding team that made the Galaxy devices. What was your personal take or reaction to the Note 7 devices exploding all over the place? It's, it was hard luck for them because that device looked very promising. Yeah, like you said, it's hard luck. It's a pretty unfortunate thing that could happen and uh, it's, it's bad for Google too. So because it's a, Samsung is one of the best uh, partners of Google in terms of market share. Yes, of course, share. they're a partner. So. Uh, they are a flagship Android uh, premium smartphone category. And so it's kind of a tough uh, period for Samsung and Google. Mm -hmm.